Yo, Elliot, I am still currently living with my biological mom who just turned 70. My biological father passed away earlier this year and would have been 90. I'm currently 28 and my fiance lives with me as well. I know you talk about separation from the mother, but I find it hard to know she's living, uh, she's somewhat disabled and is in a unique situation after my father's passing. How can I best go about the hero's journey here while living in this situation or should I be moving out? My father wanted me to keep the house and pass it down, but the area around me is becoming very overpopulated and my mother does not like the idea of me marrying my fiance since she tends to have health issues and a hard uh, time holding a job. So the red flag in this conversation that maybe she's right, I don't know, but is that your mom is intervening with her opinion about whether or not you should marry your fiance. To me, that says that there's an overly abundant attachment. There's too much mommy opinion, too much mommy energy in your life. Now, if your mom was like my mom, who pretty much just keeps her mouth shut, right? My mom doesn't, she doesn't interject too often. And if she does, she kind of apologizes, right? Because she knows, she'll just preface it by saying, I know you're a grown man and you don't need your mom to tell you, but my opinion is that, and she'll give her opinion, but she'll never, my mother is, is not overbearing in that she's trying to hold me back or deter me from making certain decisions about my life she'll watch me she'll even say it well, both of my parents we even when I was a kid they're like well uh, we'll watch you uh, you know they don't say verbalize this way but they would watch me make bad decisions still love me and then later on say well i knew you were going down the wrong route but i, I didn't want to interfere right and this is when you become older like you're 28 right this is this is a little different than if you were 18 if you were 18 and your parents were trying to give you a little bit more life advice before you went out into the world well then they're good parents. But when you're 28 and you're thinking about getting married, uh, I would say that, that your mom needs to, in other words, give you a little bit more grace, right? If she raised you right, then she should have a little bit more trust in the decisions that you make about who you marry, right? And you know, apparently she doesn't like your fiance. A lot of moms don't like their uh, son's wives because they're jealous, right? I'm not saying that's the case with your mother, but a lot of moms... Uh, they don't know how to let go of their boys. They have this uh, perverted uh, um, fantasy about their sons, that their sons uh, are somehow their uh, husband's redeemer, right? Meaning that, you know, you're going to be a better man than my husband was. And then they hope for their son to be basically what their mommy wants them to be, which is a good little girl, right? Women don't know what a good man is unless they see it. And they can't even verbalize it sometimes. They see it, they see a good man and they're like confused, like, but he's not like me. He doesn't think like a woman. How could he be a good man? But I'm so attracted to him. Because women cannot verbalize what it means to be a good man. They absolutely cannot because they know what it's like to be a woman, not a man. So your mother or our mothers, when given advice or trying to uh, uh, steer our life in a particular way, they're doing it from a mommy, a, a, a mommy perspective, right? And you don't have your dad right now, but it sounds like you've had your dad right for a while. And so your question is, do I continue to live here in this situation or move out? Now you're 28, you're already living at the house with your fiance, your mother's there. I kind of think that it's good that you're helping your mom. I, in fact, I really think it's good that you're helping your mom. In fact, that's how traditional societies always did it. And I like to think of myself as a traditionalist, right? Part of the reason why I bought 42 acres of land is because I'm bringing my parents here. Once my dad retires, I'm like, set up a trailer, put, build a little barn, a little house, a little uh, cabin on the land. I want my parents here because I want them to grow old gracefully in the with the support of their children and around their grandchildren. I want my parents here. But my parents aren't a pain in my ass. They're, they're, they're helpful. So I am a fan. I do believe that it's good for, for us to help our parents, right? It's, it's biblical, 
right? Like that you should help your you should help your parents when they get old, right? And you, you 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 were cared for them when you were young, and when they can't care for themselves anymore, it's incumbent upon us. I think it's our responsibility to do what we can to help them. If that means you know sell the house and put her in one of these, you know, I live in Florida, so we have like these luxury old folks homes i go into i used to go into some of them because i was a personal trainer traveling personal trainer when i first moved here and i had a client that lived in one of these luxury old folks homes and i walk in there i'm like this ain't bad <laughs> this ain't bad this is actually pretty nice i started thinking to myself hey when i get old i just want my kids send me here don't bother with me too much just send me to one of these places right if you can send her somewhere where she's going to get the care that she needs and she has uh the um you know a, a, can live a nice life you know, you could do that too. I think that's. I don't think that's being irresponsible. I think it's responsible, uh, in that you're still actively involved and you're trying your best to give her a situation to live in. Um, do you move out uh, and leave her there? You know, to fend for herself. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you move out nearby so that you can visit. You know, or have your fiance, who she doesn't like, come and visit. Right. That's one of the fastest way to get somebody to like you, right? Is to help them, right? Maybe your fiance can go to the house and help her out, you know, every once in a while, whatever the case may be. But if I had to give you a hard and fast answer, uh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't really. I don't really have a strong opinion either way, right? Interesting, right? Elliot doesn't have a strong opinion. Elliot doesn't have an opinion about this. Well, I give you my mindset. I give you, you know, a little bit of uh, my my mind ramblings. But essentially, this is one of those, you, make your, you don't make the right decision, you make your decision right, right? That's my default. <laughs> That's my default to these types of questions. It's like, well, you, well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, right? And you really are. You're damned if you stay, and you're damned if you leave, right? There's good to staying, and there's bad to staying. There's good to leaving, there's bad to leaving. So you make the decision, you can make a spontaneous decision. You can do this about anything in your life. And then you live with the consequences of that decisions by making the decision right. Does that make sense? Right? So if you live with your mother, then you just bite the bullet. And when she starts talking shit about your fiance, you make the decision right. Right? Okay. Don't worry, mom. You just stay over there. Right? If you leave your mom and it turns out now, it doesn't turn out the way that you thought it would, you make the decision right by fixing it. Right? You can't make the right decisions all the time, but you make your decision right. And so that's it. You, you know, just to kind of clarify a little bit, you say, how do I best go about the hero's journey while I'm living here in this situation? You are in a hero's journey right now. You are literally in the midst of your hero's journey. This is your call to action. And it's not like if you leave, you start a hero's journey. Because if you stay, you start a hero's journey. Either way, it's a call to action. Both is a call to action. The call to action to stay, that's action, Right? Because now you committed to something or the call to action to leave. Either way, it's going to be a journey. It's going to take you full circle, dude. So I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.